And I'm really starting to notice that there's a growing group of countries that are formulating around the BRICS that are, I think, coalescing against the dollar, the, the hypocrisy, the, the, the hegemony of the dollar. And um, you could see it, you could feel it, and, and you could watch all of the gold that was, was being sent eastward and the accumulation and, and the de-dollarization. 2022 rolls along and the weaponization of the dollar, as you mentioned, um, where I believe it's not the prerogative of the West to say who can and can't use the world reserve currency. It should be more for public opinion, not for the administrator of the currency to decide who can and can't use it. And it was that moment, and I often ask people, do you think this was intended? You know, we have 130 trillion in debt, 31 trillion that's on balance sheet and Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security, which is 55 trillion underfunded in and of itself and government military pensions, render us insolvent. Most of this debt accumulated at the lowest interest rates in human history. Was it intended? Did we want to pick a villain to create this great reset, to, to, accept, to all of a sudden start the de-dollarization? And this is where the story gets very interesting as it turns from here. Andy Schechtman, president and owner of Miles Franklin, explains how the present trend towards de-dollarization is consistent with his thesis that the world is on the verge of a monetary reset that will result in the BRICS having their own reserve currency, presumably backed by gold. Richard Hart will also provide an update on the present condition and outlook for the Bitcoin sector. Many people rely on their insights and both of these experts are highly accurate forecasters. By the way, if you're interested in learning about DeFi and discovering innovative projects, you may want to check out our Master in DeFi course. It's designed to help you understand DeFi in a fun and easy way, with lessons that you can access immediately. Right now, we're offering a special launch discount of 90% off. This course will also give you the skills you need to make the most of Pulse Chain when it's released. If you'd like to learn more, just click on the link in the description and become a true cryptopreneur. Now, without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. The views of Andy Schechtman on the de-dollarization of the economy. Such a massive shift of human population coalescing uh, against the dollar. And it's very obvious to see when you see shifts away from accepting the dollar for oil by countries already and admissions by, by Saudi Arabia to look to other currencies. I think you have to take a real hard look at what happens if all of a sudden the world doesn't need to own dollars to buy oil. And, and it's not just oil, because we're seeing a move away from U.S. treasuries globally. Well, certainly from China. Of course. Right? Not just China, Saudi Arabia, all of these countries. Why would anyone buy our treasuries earning 3% with inflation double that by metrics that arguably are wrong? You know, I don't know if you've ever had John Williams with Shadow Stats on your show, but you know, he'll show you numbers that the way the inflation was calculated prior to 1980, when they changed the numbers, and he would say inflation's at 15% right now. But even using 7% inflation with a 3.5% yield on the 10-year Treasury, you're guaranteed a real return of negative 3.5% compounding over 10 years. Why would anyone want to do that? And so you're right. It's not just the dollar market. It is the Treasury market. And we are incentivizing by the, the underperformance and the mismanagement of the dollar and what's happened to the, the yields on the Treasuries for other people or, or for these countries to find other ways. And I guess, you know... You know, you have a, a wave of dollar selling. Every country on the planet, nearly 85% of all oil sales have been in dollars for, I don't know, the last 50 years, if not more. All of these countries, it's the foundation of their currencies. And if all of a sudden the dollar starts to tank, it'll be a, a tsunami of selling. Sell, sell, sell in order to um, not be crushed by the wave of selling. And I think when, the, when that happens and you have all of the dollars hitting the shores here, you have that inflationary spike in interest rates. It has to compensate for the loss of purchasing power. Interest rates would have to spike. And when I started in this industry, stocks and bonds were inversely correlated to one another. One another. It was called risk on and risk off. And when you realize that they are now positively correlated to one another because interest rates have been driven so low, 
a spike in interest rates cripples both the bond and the stock market and, of course, the real estate market. The pillars of wealth in the United States center around stocks, bonds, and real estate. If the dollar gets dumped globally, and there's way more dollars outside the U.S. than there are domestically, if all of a sudden they get dumped globally because you don't have to hold them to buy oil anymore, and they hit our shore, spiking interest rates, you see a collapse simultaneously in all three pillars of wealth, including the dollar. On this idea of oil, though. The opinions of Andy Schechtman regarding both Bitcoin and gold. Basher, but I'm, I, I look at gold as it's, it's lived through two world wars, German hyperinflation, the Great Depression, and every pandemic, and it's still immutable wealth. What is the only asset every central bank owns? Gold. And I think that uh, there are some that own Bitcoin, yeah. not all of them. Well, I, on, on that point, I mean, Canada, correct me if I'm wrong, where we currently are, has sold off the majority it's of its, of, of its gold. And, and so did in the Bank of England. Gordon I mean, Brown Canada sold most has of their gold practically no gold. Stupid. Well, maybe they think it's the gold in the ground. Maybe at that point they nationalize it. I don't know. It, it makes zero sense. It really does. But, you know, again, that was a trend that was happening for quite some time. Now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they just bought some gold for the first time. Not mistaken, they just bought some in 2022. Now, I'm not positive on that, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Point of it is, is that um, I think there will come a realization that, you know, interest bearing assets in this environment isn't the most important thing. And you would think a country like Canada would wise up. They certainly have a lot of it in the ground, some of the most in, in the world. So. Maybe that will be their, their answer to this, as we nationalize the mines and don't allow any of it to leave, leave the country. Don't know. Right. But that's a good point. Yeah, it's... it's you bring it's, up a lot of good points. I think. De Gaulle from France pr proved that convertible currencies convert, and they would fractionalize it. Maybe 20% of every new BRICS currency is pegged to gold or to a commodity that has shown the veracity and the immutability of which is shown on their distributed ledger. So I don't think it would be a one-to-one -one pegging that would still give them the latitude to enact monetary policy. But I think gold would be the anchor instead of being able to let them print unabated. It would allow them at least to run monetary policy with some tether to prudence. So let's assume we've... What Andy Sheckman is of the opinion that there has been a bifurcation in the monetary system. He's joining the BRICS that you put them all together along with the Shanghai Corporation Organization and the Belt Road. You're talking north of 80% of human population and all it would take, now you have to remember, we're coming from a period of time where asset prices were blown sky high over the last several years with more money being created in the last three than in the history of the country preceding it. A lot of that money found its way into assets and you have the misallocation and the distortions that are created by this. All it would take would be for Saudi Arabia to stand up on, on the stage as they just told the folks at the Davos conference that we're now going to, going to uh, consider taking other currencies for oil. We've already been told that the BRICS currency would be pegged to gold or to commodities, and the assumption being gold being one of the commodities. I think all it would take would be Saudi Arabia to say to the West, thanks for the memories. It's been great. We appreciate it. But we're going to open up oil purchases in other currencies, not just dollars, maybe euros and ruble and rupee and gold and all of a sudden, bang, all of the countries that have had to hold dollars for the last 50 years no longer have, really have any interest in holding them. And if they all start to dump dollars, and I think it would happen quickly, where they would all dump dollars, you have a tsunami of inflation hitting the shores of the West that would immediately create a spike in interest rates to compensate for the loss of purchasing power. This is how we see a great reset as, as interest rates spike in, in relation to a crashing dollar which then is inversely correlated to asset prices that have gone stratospheric over the last few years, and I would argue um, irrationally. And as interest rates spike and this inverse correlation hits the shores, stocks, bonds, and real estate, along with the crashing dollar, all collapse at the, at the very same time. And when I ask, do you think it was intended, you know, I guess I'm kind of tongue in cheek, but if you think about it, now you have a villain instead of blaming the Fed for creating these distortions and letting this happen. You know, you have the Fed there saying they're going to raise rates, but they, they, they've done a woeful job at raising them high enough to tackle inflation. All right, let's let the fallen value of the dollar is explained by Richard Hart. You know what? What makes money good? What makes a money a money? Is it durable? Is it divisible? Is it recognizable? Is it tra transportable? And does it 
retain its value or increase in value. Right. And if something does all those things, it's going to make an amazing money. And right now the dollar doesn't do those things. Your dollar, you go, go take a picture from a McDonald's menu from 50 years ago and go take a picture from a McDonald's menu today. And you'll notice that the dollar dropped in value tenfold. 90% of its value was lost in two generations. Why? Because they just keep printing it like it's a joke. They print it like it's a joke. No one needs your money. Then you'll get new money fresh off the press from the government. They don't need yours. And so is that fair to everybody? Is it fair that you steal the value of everyone's savings? Everyone who's ever saved a dollar has had their money straight stolen from them through counterfeiting. But but wait, Richard, it's not counterfeiting. What's the difference? Who gets to spend it? That's the only difference. The pe- The penalty to all the other holders is the same. And so the difference between government quantitative easing and just some guy printing it in his back room to you, the end user, there is no difference. It's just a question of who gets to waste the money because the government gets to waste the money or is the guy illegally printing it gets to, gets to waste it. So, you know, cryptocurrency solves a lot of that. You know, how often is your bank's website down all the time? How often is Bitcoin and Ethereum down? Almost never. Uh, you know, how often is Bitcoin and Ethereum going down? Occasionally, but usually it's massively up. So, you know, <laughs> Bitcoin went up 690 million percent and you used to be able to buy one for one Bitcoin, you could have got 2000 Ethereum mm. and now you can only get 17 or 12. So like, you know, Ethereum murdered Bitcoin's returns, Bitcoin murdered everything else's returns. And now like Micron murdered both of them. So it's, if you're, if you're still sitting in cash, you really should consider crypto because yeah. when it goes up, it's going to outperform everything. There's nothing in the history of mankind that has ever performed as mm-hmm. well as cryptocurrency. And there is unlikely to ever be anything that ever performs as well again, because you know once you reach the top of your S-curve, this is the reason Bitcoin's gains aren't as good as they used to be. So Bitcoin went from 3,800 in the COVID dip up to 70,000. Ethereum went from 88 in the COVID dip up to 5,000. Well, that's the difference between a 20x and a 60x. Big difference. You know, so you got an extra 3x by holding Ethereum. And now Ethereum doesn't even blow up the environment anymore. And so now right. there's less issuance. It's like it's 0.5% of your issuance where Bitcoin is four times higher at 1.69. Uh, While Richard Hart originally discussed Bitcoin as a currency, the currency has since been transformed into a filter. That's fine because like store value has more value in it. So like tautologically, things that you use to exchange value will always be worth less than the values themselves because it's a proxy for rare things, goods and services, time. Um, so like being store value is worth 10 to 100 fold more than being a transfer network. Transfer networks are, you know, relatively efficient and relatively cheap already. So there's diminished uh, upside from replacing them. But stores of value, like gold as a financial instrument, is worth 10 times Visa plus MasterCard plus PayPal plus all that crap. And you're like, well, great. Then we can attack that 10 times larger market. You know, hex attacks, printed cash is only maybe 5 trillion. Time deposit cash is like 7 trillion. So it's a larger market. So like hex does time deposits and accidentally does all these other things better than Bitcoin. Like it's more secure. People don't understand that. People think hash rate security. You're like, hey, Ethereum literally has no hash rate now, but it seems to be working great. So guys, where's the parade of imaginary horribles? Explain to me how, you know, hash rate equals security. They don't know anything about software. You're like, the biggest problem all these currencies have is inflation bugs. Does hash rate address those? No? Okay. Maybe you don't know nothing about security. <laughs> Maybe go learn about it, you know? What do you think of the expert opinions of Andy Sheckman and Richard Hart on the cryptocurrency market? Tell us in the comments. We hope we were able to provide some value and helped you to move a step ahead in your crypto journey. Be sure to check out our crypto brand called Cryptopreneur and get yourself the highest quality crypto merch available right now on the market and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our content. Till next time, goodbye.